G'day folks. Well, I figured it's time to strip out this uh, Yamato Dataway cabinet. Uh, it's a very early Dataway system, a linear type. Unfortunately, it's windy as hell out there, so you probably won't be able to hear what I'm going to say, but I'll try and explain the top section, which is where all these pneumatics hoses go. I'm guessing it'll be a vacuum pump based system as well, since this has a vacuum reservoir on it, not a uh, pressure reservoir but the air cylinders behave in a similar way. I think vacuum is probably more efficient, uh, particularly for what it's doing. But then, that being said, there are some big pneumatics inputs as well, so it'd be a bit of both, compressed air and vacuum. But up top, most of it's missing. Put that down there. Yeah, all these other vibrators are missing. There's supposed to be a product distribution head and everything over the top. But these would have trays on them that just distribute product into these uh, wires. Um, these vibrators are responsible for vibrating the product down a, a chute or a tray. And they receive a DC signal through this board here, courtesy of those I guess they'd be mo not mos maybe MOSFETs or triax. I can't see a big rectifier on here, but there's some big ass DC or big ass capacitors, maybe AC capacitors, which feed that board from the top. So that's all to do with product distribution. Goes down a uh, vibrating conveyor essentially. And when it does. It ends up in these little uh, holders and there'd be a series of bagging unit or something underneath. And each one of these things here is on a, a way head or something. The more weight you put in this holder, the more it bears down on the thing and the, the computer inside tells it how much is in there. Damn wind. I know this is going to be hard to understand but I've got to strip this thing down now. Um, yeah, the computer board inside will read how much weight is going into each one of those things. That's what these multicoloured cables are for. Um, once it gets to a certain weight, it stops vibrating and dropping stuff into the uh, distribution head, and then it drops it down into the uh, package via a chute. But of course, all that's missing. I don't have any of that stuff to demonstrate it. Um, these machines were just made for automated weigh and pack whether it's peanuts, M&Ms, um, non, like non-confectionery or non-food products even, plastic buttons, you name it. If it can be weighed into packaged form, you can weigh it with these sorts of machines, be it a linear data way or a radial data way. But yeah, once the weight's up to level, that should open like that. There's a cylinder down here which brings this block back. You can see they're on the cams. I'll keep some of these heads to play with. all mangled up so it doesn't work anymore. Neither does that one. Well, I hope you get the gist of that. It's a bit hard to explain with so much wind noise. Um, yeah, the, new, the vacuum pump and everything's missing. Uh, that's how I found it. So there's nothing in there worth looking at. Uh, I'm going to pull these back panels out as a whole. The backing panels are mild steel anyway, or electroplated steel, so they've got to come out to clean this thing. I want to hold it in as clean stainless steel scrap for the guys there. They gave it to me as it is, just to strip out, so I'm not going to get any money for the stainless but I'm going to get to keep all of this stuff for free. So I'm sort of doing them a favour. And just looking at some of the capacitors on that board, some of them look a bit stressed. But yeah, there's various 
semiconductors mounted on it. We'll have a look at that once I get it out. Right now I just want to strip the guts out of this and position the trailer for tomorrow so that I can uh, tow it out and get rid of it. But it's a fairly heavily built cabinet. It's all TIG welded. You can see that I've TIG that extra bracket in. Most of this has been pickled. They've removed all the scale and crap, but that's been tigged in after the fact. You can see it hasn't been pickled. It's still got some tarnishing and oxide on it. Same with that one there. This is something I do as a daily job, is actually TIG welding like this. I wish I could show you a lot of what I make, but that'd give away where I work, so I can't really do that. But this is the kind of shit that I fabricate. Not on such a massive scale, but... Yeah, stainless steel fabrication and welding is pretty much my new specialty. Um, yeah, that's why they got me teaching a couple of new guys at work. It's good fun, it's really easy to do. I mean, stainless steel is a piece of cake to work with. It's not rusty or dirty like my old steel. And with a good TIG and a MIG, you can pretty much build anything. But this is all TIG welded. Very nice, flush, smooth welds. Very well made, it's a shame to scrap it, but... Uh, what else do you do with it? It's too heavy, it weighs half a tonne, 500 kilos, almost a thousand pounds. It's heavy stuff. Yeah, this side of the panel seems to be main power input. Um, that's a main breaker with an RCD. That one there's, yeah that's 40 amp, 30 amp, all single phase as well. There's various other contactors to control things, small control relays, little cube relays. Various barrier strips. And the PLC is a Mitsubishi built, uh, what is it? AOJ2H CPU, maximum 8K step, 8,000 steps maybe. Date 1995, so yeah, it's fairly old. Ribbon cables joining each module together. There's an outer one. There's a there's three stacked together, so it's a stackable system. Yeah, that's all outputs and things. More outputs on that one. Okay, so that'd be the CPU, and then you yeah you stack your units accordingly based on what you want to do. So there's actually three units there as one stack. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to start cutting cables and just ripping shit out. There's good wire in it, but still I've got rolls and rolls of brand new stuff, so I'm just going to sever all these cables and throw them out. The boards and things we'll look at later. The main CPU in there. Is that made by NCR? Yeah, I don't know, we'll find out when I, when I get the board out. Can't quite see it. Yeah, we've definitely thinned it out now. Stripped a lot of the cables and things out of the way. This is a uh, 100 volt 3 kVA transformer. Could be quite handy. Also got capacitors to go with it, which apparently are rectified. There's a bridge rectifier down there. So 100 volts DC with some decent, I think they're about 10,000 microfarad 250 volt caps. Yeah, serious stuff. Yeah, just got to try and get this panel out. This side panel and the back panel are actually one. They're folded, single piece folded steel piece. So I'm going to have to separate all that from the back panel and pull it out as one piece. And I'll separate the vacuum receiver as well. It's only a tiny little thing, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> it's nicely made, I'll give them that much. Um, yeah, and clean all the uh, other crap out of there. What's that out? 1995, 11th month, 17th day. It's an old ROM chip or something. EEPROM, I think they call it. Not really much use. <laughs> There's bits of wire and stuff in the back corner. It's had rats living inside it, so a lot of the wires were chewed through. Particularly the big multi-core looms that go to these connectors up here. They were all chewed to bits down the back. There's a big bundle of optic fibres back there, I can't see what they go into. Um, yeah, I don't really know where they go. There might be something behind this big panel. It contains optic fibre, because that's an awfully big bundle back there. Uh, 
Okay, well there's not much else in here. And this is an extension cable for the control console. That's all it is, it's just a double extra length of uh, optic fibre. Since it's such a bitch to uh, try and splice in, uh, I guess they just ship out an extra roll of it. Bit of a bugger, the ends are cut off. <laughs> I'm guessing these ends here also go down to there where there's nothing on it. So it's not really much use to anyone, unfortunately. But either way, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to pick up any bolts and nuts and things that I might have missed and the rest of the inside can be refilled with stainless plates and other bits and pieces that are pulled off it. I've got a milk crate down there which is uh, full of plates and things from inside so I'll throw that and the door back inside it. Keep all the things like these nuts and other stuff and that should do it. But that's one seriously heavy cabinet. It's all TIG welded too. I can't see any MIG welds. They're all nice TIG welds. Yeah. It's all fully TIG welded. And made in Japan. Pretty no, nice little piece of engineering. They'd make an awesome test chamber. <laughs> I wish I had a place to put her. I'd just buy it as it is. Hell, I could have bought the whole thing at steel value, since that was all it was worth before it was stripped. Oops. Don't know what any of this means, but hopefully someone does. Scrap to get rid of. I wonder how that happened. Well, that's about the end of that bit. I'm going to get the rattle gun out and knock those uh, big vibrators and weigh heads off it. And that'll be about it. I can drag it out the front and put it up to the car for tomorrow so I can drop haul it in. Might even get the four inch grinder out and knock some of these straps off. Those flat 50 by 6 mil flat bar is quite handy especially in stainless steel. So I might get the four inch grinder in here and I'll cut those little TIG welds. Those welds are very cold light penetration welds so only a slight score is all it'll take to break them and then I can rip those bars out. So yeah, I think I'll scab some of those bars before this thing goes. <laughs> I'll get my money's worth. Not that I'm paying anything for it, I might as well get my money's worth. <laughs> now, I think that'll be that for that trip tonight. I'll look at the weigh heads and things tomorrow. Well, I'll rattle them off and then, I'll, then we'll look at them separately, along with the rest of the uh, control boards. Thanks for watching.